yesterday we have begun with the play strife and i have introduced you to the major characters of this play we have also started discussing the first scene of act 1 of this play and as you know that a meeting was going on and the chairman and board of directors of trinartha tin plate works were discussing about the workers strike the chairman was john anthony the main character of this play uh the board of directors have invited simpson harness a trade union official to mediate so till here we have discussed yesterday now when harness comes he tells the members of the board of directors bluntly that the workers are on the right stand that their demands are right but the only thing which the union has to decide is whether they should start supporting the workers again the chairman john anthony says that they would break the strike by employing free labor at this harness tells them frankly the attitude of the union they are not supporting the workers just because their demands regarding the engineers and furnace men are in excess of the rate prevailing in other factories he adds that that afternoon he would try to persuade the workers to withdraw those demands and if they do so the union will start supporting them again then he appeals to the directors to end this um this typical tug of war between the employers and the laborers the capitalists and the laborers he asks i quote why don't you recognize once and for all that these people are men like yourselves and want what is good for them just as you want what is good for you so harness ask the directors to think properly in favor of the laborers and uh take their final decision only after he has discussed the question with the workers at this anthony anthony gives his assent then a group of workers including roberts green thomas and rouse come in they are offered chairs but roberts says that they would prefer to stand in the presence of the directors then the chairman mr anthony asks them what they want what are their demands roberts says uh, that they have come to hear what the board has to say it is for the board to speak first but mr anthony says that the board has nothing to say at this robert says that in that case they are only wasting the director's time and would make a move then anthony tells roberts that since the men had asked for this conference the board wishes to hear what they have to say they want to know their uh, about their demands meanwhile harness asks him to explain um, he tells roberts to explain his proposals clearly and be reasonable in that uh, on behalf of the workers thomas says that they only want justice at this roberts gets angry and he says that they cannot expect justice from these directors and he reminds thomas that once when he went to london to present the point of view of the workers then what has happened he he said that mr anthony had told him that they were discontented dogs those who are never satisfied and that he was a foolish uneducated man who knew nothing of the wants of men he spoke for 
Anthony tells him that there could be only one master, meaning that it would be capital. And Roberts replies that labor will be the master. They stare at each other in silence. They are the two poles apart in their views, in their ideology. Francis Underwood, manager of the factory, he suggests that Roberts may permit the other workers to speak. But other workers uh, were unable to speak much and they just stammer a few words. Then the directors, the directors are uh, asking the manager, they ask the manager whether the workers can be squeezed a little more. The situation is that the men cannot be squeezed anymore. They are all starving, but in spite of that, they would prefer death to surrender. He wants to know whether their demands would be accepted. All the demands are fair and they are not going to make any change in them. Anthony tells him plainly that they would not accept a single demand of theirs. At this, Roberts warns them that if they were thinking that the man would surrender in a week or two, they were wrong. He asks them to get ready for the worst situation. And he warns Anthony that this would be the last fight of his life. Anthony remains a stern and adjourns the meeting till 5 p.m. So nobody is ready to compromise or to listen to or understand the um, views of each other. Both the parties remain adamant. On one hand, uh, John Anthony uh, was there and uh, from the side of the laborers or the workers, Roberts, he was very uh, stern and he was firm on his footing. Everyone is shocked at the turn the events had taken. When the workers' representatives have left, the union official harness comments that neither side had shown any conciliatory spirit. And when harness leaves and it comes to announce that lunch is ready. So the directors, they start going. But Annette actually wants to talk to her father in privacy. She wants to uh, talk to her father alone and this Wonklin and Underwood at this Wonklin and Underwood leave. Tench also leaves. Then when everybody leaves and it shuts the door and asks her father what what happened, uh, whether the strike is settled and when he says that no it's not the problem is not sought out and it says that Frank says that they all want to come to a compromise except Roberts. Then Anthony tells her that he does not want to accept any compromise. She tells him that there is a very great distress among the workers. And then she tells Anthony about her old maid Annie who has married Roberts. She is in a very miserable state. Because her heart is weak and since the strike began, she had not been getting even proper food to eat. Then Anthony asks his daughter to give Annie whatever she needs. But Annette says that Roberts does not let her take anything from them. So she just wants to convey to her father that the workers, they are suffering, they are in pain. And she appeals to him to stop the strike which is causing so much suffering for the laborers. And it is also uh, causing uh, losses to the factory. Anthony tells her to remain interested in novels and music and not to advise him on matters of business. And he says that the implications of this industrial struggle are too far reaching for her to understand. If the demands of the workers are met, they will ask for more and more. And then what will happen? How uh, she'll be able to get all those comforts which uh, 
she is having at that time they would all disappear and her children would then be reduced to the same position as that of the laborers whom she was pitying at that time however and it does not understand what relation all this has with the strike anthony says that she will take one or two generations to understand the significance of this class struggle and it says that the strike will ruin the company then anthony tells her that she would allow him to be the best judge of that she need not bother about him or about the company but and it tells him that she cannot stand by and let poor any roberts and the children of the workers suffer she also tells him that the strike is putting too much strain on him also as his doctor had advised him to avoid all strain because it may break him down she appeals to him to think of his children and change his rigid stand at this point tench enters on the pretext of getting some papers signed when anthony signed the papers he tells him that he depends entirely on the company for his livelihood and he is passing sleepless nights because he sees the fortunes of the company declining then he comes to the main thing that he wants to tell mr anthony that was that he had gathered that the directors were going to overthrow him as chairman if he continued to stick to his strong views this upsets anthony even more and he starts drinking whiskey the strike is actually putting too much strain on him and with this the scene one of act 1 ends so we see in this uh, first scene of act 1 actually there is only one scene in this act that both the parties the capitalists or we can say the owner or the chairman and on the other hand the workers or the union leaders they are not at ease they are not comfortable they are not happy at this tug of war uh, due to this strife between the owners or the capitalists of the factory uh, and the laborers nobody is happy and it is putting strain on all of them the workers are suffering they are poor they are not having anything to eat and on the other hand even the board of directors and the chairman they are also not at peace so what goldsworthy actually wants to convey is that strikes are not in favor of anybody they are not good so with this the first scene ends and tomorrow students will start with scene 1 of act 2 in act 2 we have two scenes so tomorrow we'll discuss the scene 1 that's all for today thank you